Hello, hi, welcome back, and this is the Chip Master. In this class, we're going to talk about the Apple RTC section sec circuit. And uh, as you can know, as you want to see, the RTC, the Apple laptops or Apple notebook doesn't carry a, a CMOS battery. There is no CMOS battery on a Apple notebook motherboard, right? So, therefore, understanding how the circuit works can help you tremendously in doing a repair process when you're doing the maintenance process especially for a no trigger fault where you plug in the app mag safe you get the orange light charging light but you hit the power button it's not turning on maybe the fault could be in the rtc section and you don't know so understanding the rtc section for the apple computers will help you tremendously how to solve these problems on the apple notebooks all right so we are talking about the apple rtc circuit since the apple um, computer system doesn't carry a CMOS battery. Other laptops nowadays for the PC also doesn't carry a CMOS battery. The CMOS battery is also stored inside the, the main battery. Same for the Apple. Alright, but in this class I'm going to break down the architecture step by step and to explain how the RTC battery actually work. The RTC section and the RTC battery works for the Apple notebooks. Okay, uh, we have here a schematic for the Apple, this is the notebook that we're looking at. It's A202936. Right, as we all know, this is an Apple based motherboard. This is a demo video. If you want full videos, right, you have to pay when all my videos are released and launched and ready for purchase. Okay, so first, uh, we all know the VCC RTC section on any laptop or any computer the first signal you should always check is for the VCC RTC now I also have a timing here right I also have a timing diagram here right uh, let me this is for the in and, uh, this is the timing so Intel series 6 timing diagram and explanation all right so I have um, created this info right and um, for you this is a picture of the actual timing diagram of the vcc rtc so it says that the vcc rtc is a bridge rtc circuit is used to save cmos parameters right rtc reset and srt reset is a bridge reset circuit signal it is three volt and above right high starting from ich9 there are two reset signals so from ich9 this second reset signal was implemented srtc reset and this srt reset is to turn on the intel management engine reset module inside of the PCH right and I have this information here on this data sheet for you RTC RST and it is and SRTC this is from the Intel data sheet as you can see right so these are the two reset signals so uh, let's go to the schematic and let's go for VCC RTC all right so VCC RTC is the first thing that you should check Right, according to the timing diagram by Intel, as you can see, I have an image here of the timing diagram. It's not so clear where we have the board, we have destination, we have VCC RTC, which is the signal name. And if you notice, there are some lines, some rising edges. As you can see, these are the time when each signal should come in. So if you're going to confirm this timing diagram with an oscilloscope, this should be the exact thing you should get. So if you're going to compare VCC, RTC with SRTC reset or RT reset reset then the timing should be the same the way you connect your oscilloscope to these two you hit the power button in the single trigger mode then you should grab these two signals and compare right because each signal has a specific time so from from this edge right to here as you can see is, is a time so this timing is roughly 18 milliseconds based when I draw it on my oscilloscope this is 18 milliseconds it takes for RTC RTC SRTC reset and RTC reset signal to rise immediately after the RTC section is powered in the PCH right so understanding how to use oscilloscope in oscilloscope class I'm going to teach you everything you need to know about oscilloscope and how to use it in a single or normal mode or auto mode and how to grab the signals and to set up a timing adjustments so you can get the perfect and correct signals for your um doing your maintenance process okay so that's that's for another class but we are talking about the timing which is for the intel series 6 power management and timing diagram all right so vcc rtc is reason first it is three volt right as you can see uh the vcc rtc section on the on the schematic here all right so this is VCC RTC and it's powered by PPV RTC underscore G3H and this signal is going to power the RTC module instead of the PCH and this voltage should not exceed 
uh, fall below 2.5 volts right so it should this is roughly 3 volts right lowest is 2.5 volt right this voltage must not be lower than 2.5 volt right so this voltage is very critical if this voltage is not coming then you cannot turn on the laptop it can trigger you hit the power button there is no response from the power button because there's two critical signals that are missing which is powered by this ppvrtc underscore g3h so if we copy this signal so if we copy this signal right let me grab the first part copy paste it get another p all right this signal is coming here to generate this is as i said before apple has a tendency of renaming each signal so this signal is coming to here and is coming over to power and these are the pages that it's going right so let's go to the next part see all right here so this ppv rtc underscore g3h is coming through a resistor a set of resistors right so we have a 330 kilo ohm resistor we have a 1 mega ohm resistor a 220 kilo ohm resistors now this one p is coming through this resistor of r18 r1800 is coming to become pch underscore internal vrmen underscore l so this signal is known as the internal voltage regulator module enable if this signal is not coming from this PPVCRTC section, then you can't turn on the board because the internal 1.05 volt suspend regulator will not be turned on. Right? So this voltage is your 1.05 volt sus regulator. Right? This is your 1.05 volt suspend regulator. And this signal is used to turn on. This signal is used to turn on that 1.05 suspend regulator inside of the PCH, right? And if you copy this signal, if I copy this signal, then you will know, right? This signal, let's paste it again and search. Oh, sorry, I didn't copy it. Right, as you can see, this signal is going to power that section inside of the pch and it's going to the rtc section so this is all these signals are going to the rtc section right so internal vr 1.05 volt regulator so this is a 1.05 volt suspend regulator inside of the rtc section to turn it on and if this signal is not turned on no trigger fault will come so you hit the power button it won't respond because your rtc section is not working Remember the first step start from this RTC, VCC RTC. So if VCC RTC is not powered, then you won't turn on your laptop. So let's see the other circuit, the other signal. So let's go back to the previous signal. Alright, and let's go back to where it's coming from. The next one we have here is coming through 220 kilo ohm resistor. The first one is RTC reset L, and the second one is SRTC reset L. And these two signals are going directly to the PCH. So let's go back to this signal, search, right? See, RTC reset L is all going to the RTC. And SRTC reset L is also going to the RTC. So these are the two reset circuits. So this one is the first reset in Intel series ICH9. Then they release the second RTC reset signal, which is to turn on the Intel management engine module instead of the RTC well. Let's look at the data sheet. It says here, RTC is used to reset PCH registers. These are some internal initialization registers that needs to be initialized during this reset process, right? You see, if a jumper is used on this pin, it should only be pulled over on the system in the G3 state, right? That's in the mechanical off state, right? And then replace to the default jumper position. Upon booting, the buyer should recognize this ITC reset and assert it and clear internal PCH registers. So this is what the guys use for the next stop to reset, to clear the internal um, information and parameters in the BIOS right by using a jumper to shorten it to ground pulling it low will what clear the internal pch register 
right so this is from the desktop platform where you want to erase certain bios information and erase a bios password we can use this technique to pull rtc reset circuit um, signal rule right so this signal should not be pulled out during the s0 to the s5 state because if this is pulled out before the trigger which is the soft off which is s5 then you can't turn on the machine no trigger fault the next signal you want to look at is the srtc reset the srtc reset signal portion is for the intel management engine and should not be connected to a jumper right on the platform the only time the signal gets asserted low is with when the coin cell batch is removed or not installed on the platform in the g street pulling the signal low will what will cause like enter allow the computer to could be to be in an on the indetermined state similar to rtc reset and it's imperative that srt reset should not be pulled low in the s0 and the s5 state so these signals should not be pulled low before you actually trigger the board right so these two signal and this signal should not be low before the s5 during the s5 state this, sh this signal should be high 3 volt always right and this is to, to turn on the 1.05 volt regulator this is to turn on the management engine module and this is to turn on the intel rtc reset registers instead of this um pch in the rtc module and this is the rtc module inside of your pch all right so we're going to look at the other section so as you can see as i said before the, R the apple notebooks computer system doesn't carry a seamless battery right so uh and it doesn't have a 32 kilohertz 32.768 kilohertz crystal there is no crystal there is no 32.768 kilohertz crystal that you will normally find on a regular pc board so this as you can see there is no crystal right so this board doesn't carry a crystal so where does it get its clock from all right where does it get its clock from if you notice there's a cisco clock underscore 32k underscore rtc right so let's go to the timing right as you can see for here the vcc rtc is powered rtc is powered srtc is powered so the next signal is 32.768 and this has a rising edge right after rtc section is powered so you see the order that it's in this is the timing that you should follow so rtc vcc rtc is powered first then srtc is powered after 18 millisecond if any given time if any given time the rtc section is powered before or during the rising edge of this this is not a valid reset signal right this is not complete this is a complete reset during this time right here this is when it's completed right so this is a complete reset once it comes here and this is the starting point of the rtc reset right so this is a complete reset right so the reset is complete when it reaches this falling rising edge right the reset is complete so reset is complete right and this is 3 volt also right should not be below 2.5 volt so the reset is complete at this section okay so you can use oscilloscope to confirm this right vcc compared vcc rtc and rtc reset and you should get the exact rising edge of this timing and you know that your circuit is working perfectly so that's the beauty of an oscilloscope and using the timing diagram to go through doing your maintenance process if your fault is inside of the rtc section all right now as i said before this board doesn't carry a crystal so where does this clock is coming from so remember this clock so this clock is coming from a chip there's a dedicated chip on the board that is used to supply the clock and this clock is also coming from that chip which is powered by the pp3.42 g3 hot here is the chip u28 Right, there's a dedicated chip that powers the Mac or the Apple clock circuit, RTC circuit. So let's look at the working conditions of this clock. So this U28, it is SLG3NB148V. This is the name of the chip, right? And this has two supply, three supplies. This chip consists of three supplies, but we're going to focus on only two, which is this one. So this one, which is PP3.42 G3, this is 3.42 volts, which is coming to here. To supply pin number 13 and then we have another signal pp 3 d 3 underscore s5 which is coming to pin number two of this chip right now as you see coin cell no coin cell with so this one is no coin cell and voltage is 3.42 right this is a 3.42 volt now this one 
see no kind cell remember the CMOS battery is not on the Apple computer so this one will work with this one and this is 3.3 volt S5 this is coming from the pulse rate modulation circuit PWM this is coming from 3.3 volt S5 it is the standby voltage for the bridge or the PCH right remember this is the Intel series 6 which is BD82 HM65 and this is getting some standby voltages now this voltage pulse rate modulation in another class in my class in class when you purchase the videos then you learn all about PWM how to use oscilloscope to check a pulse rate modulation circuit right the front end and the back end of the inductor what are some of the faults that occur like over voltage right over current or under voltage or under voltage or over current protection faults in that class I'm going to show you the entire process how to modify and how to observe and to judge whether the fault is coming from the chip or the upper MOSFET during the switching frequency and everything that you need to learn about PWM right and um, that's another class and that's when you purchase I'll give demo on that video sometime next week about PWM alright so back to this part so after supplying these two pins as you can see there are some output signals see this signal will come out first when you supply VBAT VBAT pin number 13 which is coming from PP 3.42 volt right then this voltage will come out first see uh, VDD RTC underscore out one and this is coming out right and this is going to power the RTC section as you can see see for SB RTC power so this voltage is coming out it is 3 volt it is going to power the RTC section this is 3.3 volt coming out of this chip to power the RTC well so it's it's highlighted here for you right it's highlighted here for you right so this is for the salt bridge power RTC power right so in the timing if you want to compare if this chip is working so you compare this one this is the R VCC RTC and then this one is the clock right this is the 32 this is a 32.6 kilohertz clock right so this is a 32 clock all right 32.768 kilohertz clock all right and this clock is used is going to power the rtc well and this one is the ppvcc rtc this is ppv rtc power supply right and that's it so this is pp right or you can call it a rtc power right and this one is a rising edge first and then after one millisecond or two millisecond then after two millisecond then the 32.6 kilohertz signal will come out all right so the next signal will come out is this one which is uh from 32 kilohertz and the signal is going to the rtc section also and this will come out second so this one will come out first so one and then the second signal come out which is 32 kilohertz which is six clock underscore clock count 32 underscore rtc which is going to the bridge or the pch rtc section right so let's go back to where this clock is coming from as you can see six clock underscore clock 32 underscore rtc is going to this one as you notice rtc x2 is not connected since this clock this board doesn't have a crystal all the clock is coming from this chip right it's coming from this u2800 chip right so that you should understand all the apple motherboards are gen um, generate their rtc circuit right there are some other clocks here as you can see which is a 25 megahertz clock the only time this clock will release these three clocks right these clock will be released after the trigger right and as you can see it has a supply a dedicated supply as you can see it's coming from here which is pp 3 v 3 underscore ENET right and it's coming to here see there are three clocks a b and c so when you give the supply see pp on pp 3 v 3 underscore e n e t which is coming to pin number five which is vdd for the clock when you give this supply for this clock what will happen then it will all put a x2 clock signal all right this is a x2 clock signal and it's going to give a frequency to turn on this clock as you can see this is another crystal yeah, right this it's critical all right so this is the crystal y2805 y2805 and this is a total of 25 megahertz all right this is a total of 25 megahertz and this is the clock that's going to provide 
a rest of clock so a b and c so when you give supply when you give this supply a when you give this supply a b d d i o a then it will output a clock when you give supply to this b clock b d d i o 25 b then it will output a 25 or for b and when you go for c this one will output a 25 megahertz for c so it's three clocks coming out of this chip right well this is a demo video right uh if you want full videos you have to pay okay i hope you learned something from this section and understanding how the apple rtc section work remember the apple rtc apple um, notebooks doesn't carry an rtc crystal nor a battery a CMOS battery and understanding the signal is very important during the maintenance process okay thanks for watching